think Karl Marx was wrong. He uh, he said that religion is the opiate of the masses, but I think uh, professional wrestling is a far better example of an opiate in large numbers of people. Uh, and a lot of high quality talent being used, a uh, good mix of many of the really best of Southern California as well as you know the Arizona and Nevada area. It's very easy to go into a match like this and be overly confident or to want to promote yourself as being the best, but the reality is Tyler Bateman's a very talented individual. I've wrestled him before and I'm actually 0-1 against him. Uh, we used to tag years ago, uh, 2007. So he's someone I've known for a very long time. The reality of this is if I have, want to have any hope of defeating him, I can't go into it thinking I, I can defeat him or that I have defeated him already. I have to remember that every opponent's dangerous until they're done. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, weighing in at 200 pounds, from Rose End, he is the goddamn Welcome once again, wrestling fans, to Rogue Tournament Wrestling. I'm Joshua Shibata, alongside with me, as always, Kathy Campanelli. How are you doing, Kathy? Joshua, I am invigorated, I am revived, I am looking at the Rose of the Devil's Garden and the Devil himself, Sarah Wolf and Bateman, respectively. And, I mean, we're in for quite a show if this is going to be our opening match. Right. Every match here in the Rogue Tournament could be a main event anywhere around the world. Right now, you see, as Kathy mentioned, the goddamn man Bateman in there with the Rose of the Devil's Garden, Sarah Wolf. And his opponent, making his way to the ring from Accra, Massachusetts, weighing in at 235 pounds, he is the genius of armbar, Simon Grimm. To see how this matchup comes underway. I mean, the last time that Simon Grimm was in Southern California was last year against Bateman. That is correct, Kathy. And in that confrontation, Simon Grimm was the one that unfortunately was on the losing side. Bateman is 1 0 against Grimm. You know that has to be on Grimm's mind entering into this match. Grimm is a born competitor. You're not going to take something like that lightly. That is correct. Grimm has a martial arts background as he was introduced. He is the genius of the armbar. You know he's definitely going to be focusing on picking apart Bateman. And Grimm has such a long history here in professional wrestling. Obviously, former WWE NXT Tag Team Champion. He's wrestled all around the world. And we are very privileged and fortunate to have him here in Rogue Tournament Wrestling. those war cries from the audience echoing for Bateman a little earlier. This is very much a Bateman audience. Obviously, we are here at Bateman SoCal, in SoCal, his hometown. Already the crowd. I mean, the, the crowd wants blood. The crowd Already. definitely wants blood. These two men have a lot of history together. Former tag team partners, the original, originating team of Violence Unlimited. Which then went on to be revived with I mean, we know him from Ring of Honor. We know him from New Japan, the Brody King. That's right, Brody King, one of SoCal's own, along with Bateman. And again, just something I'm pretty sure Simon Grimm, you know, it's in the back of his head, obviously, that he might have been replaced by Brody King. And it's an interesting thing you mentioned that. I think that Bateman is someone that is, is so keen on the idea of having the psychological advantage. Of course. How of course. is that going to play into this matchup? Oh, quick pin attempt already. Already Simon Grimm with that catch as catch can wrestling. He's all over Bateman. And honestly, to defeat a guy like Bateman, the goddamn man, you got to stay on him, stick on him like glue. And I think, too, I mean, Bateman is so used to getting inside the minds of his opponents. Mm -hmm. Grimm can't let his guard down. Not, not for one second. Oh, beautiful plies. <laughs> Oh, there you go. Absolute Simple aggression. And talk about mind games right now. Simon Grimm playing mind games with Bateman, just showing how easily he can get Bateman down. And I mean, we're used to the, the small joint manipulation being a calling card of Bateman. That's so. right. That's right. And again, Ooh. these two 
have a history together, train together, Violence Unlimited, work together. Yep. So you know they know each other's weaknesses, they know what body parts to focus on. They know what's in each other's wheelhouse. That's right. It's very much going to be the proverbial chess game here between these two. Grim already was working on that shoulder and arm of Bateman. He's mm -hmm. going to try and take away that death from above elbow strike. That's right. The death from above has put away many opponents for Bateman. Oh! Ooh. A chop to the shoulder, that right shoulder, trying to, again, like we said, weaken, weaken that devastating elbow. And the crowd here excited. You see Sarah Wolf coming up the crowd, trying to get support for his lover, Bateman. Oh, 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 oh Simon no. Grimm. If you're, if, you're weak, if you're weak, if you don't like to see little joint manipulation here, turn away from the camera, oh. guys. <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. He's, he's going to rip his hand in half. He's going to tear it apart like a piece of chicken. Oh, oh there the arm go. Bar. There's the arm bar. Can he lock it in? I think the shoulders are down. Referee Isaac Hayes making the count. And again, again, Bateman so smart wrestling-wise. Oh, but there you go. Grimm catches the knee bar. But brilliant wing, ring awareness from Bateman. That's right. Again, both of these men have been in the ring for a while. Both men wrestling for almost 20 years each. Absolutely. A lot of experience within this ring. A lot of experience ring. in that ring. Actually, in this entire tournament, mm -hmm. every competitor has over 10 years' experience in the ring. We have some of the best. Lots of wrestlers trying to line up to get into one of the most prestigious tournaments in wrestling, rogue tournament wrestling. We got former champions. We got current champions. We got international superstars. And look no further than the two men inside the ring right now. I mean, Bateman himself is a very well decorated, two time AWS heavyweight champion, as well as a two time United TV champion on Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. Right. And as I said before, the pedigree of Grimm, former NXT champion. I mean, the guy has wrestled all over the world. And again, we are privileged to have such a caliber athlete here at Rogue Tournament Wrestling. And now it's a meeting of the minds. That's putting their heads together. Oh, like two bucking rams. And you see the crowd. Oh. oh! Can't tell if Bateman went down first or both men just from exhaustion. Oh! Some big boots to the chest exchanged. Oh my gosh. Neither man afraid to get physical. Both men exhibiting the strong style of wrestling. I mean, no love lost between the two of them as it erupts into a bit of a slugfest. And the crowd here at the 1720 bar eating it up. Ooh. Beautiful uppercut nearly takes the head off of Bateman. Once again, Bateman just barely was supported by the ropes. Sarah Bateman, I mean, definitely, of course, trying to encourage the goddamn man from the outside, but she's... Looking a little nervous over there. Well, again, uh, who wouldn't be when you have a guy like Grimm in the ring? Oh! Running elbow again. Only the ropes supporting Bateman up. Oh! Oh! oh. Sacrifice play. Oh. oh! And again, Bateman trying to get into the head of his former tag team partner, Grimm, using Sarah Wolf. Sarah Wolf volunteering, I'm sure. Oh, of course, of course. Again, anytime Bateman makes his presence in the ring, Sarah Wolf not far behind. And now Bateman has the advantage. Oof. Jack's connecting to the jaw of Grimm. I mean, Bateman with those long limbs, he definitely has an advantage. He doesn't even have to get that close to Grimm to strike out. And now it looks like he's set up for a death from above. No. Oh. Nope. Didn't but hit cover. it too. Bateman barely getting the win here. Again, both of these men can't t spend too much energy. They do have a final in the tournament that format for Rogue Tournament Wrestling. We have three preliminary matches. Each winner of those three matches go into our final main event. Here's the cover two and a kick out. So obviously, both Grimm and Bateman don't want to spend too much energy because then they'll have to face two other men in our finals. So in one night, Kathy, you have to beat three men in one night to win the prestigious Rogue Tournament Championship. And it's such a testament to the strategy you have to have as the wrestler in this competition. I mean, you can't over-exhaust yourself, but you still need to come out victorious. Oh my gosh. 
Oh, just bending the wrists of Bateman. And now using that lower, lower leg strength right there for the cover. Legs a little close to the ropes. Nope, gets his elbows up. Oh, Bateman right on top of Grimm. Oh, clobbering. And now it has Grimm. truly just become a brawl. No scientific methods there. Technique out the window. It is just a fight. Sometimes all you need when you're someone as dangerous as Bateman is just that aggression. And exactly. Enough, enough to piss you off. And to be honest, that's what makes Bateman so dangerous. He is willing to do anything, literally anything, for the win. And now the crowd, crowd's supporting both men. They love a fight here at Rogue Tournament Wrestling. And here at Rogue, you're going to see some of the very best in competition. That is correct. We still have... Uh, we still have Ray Horace coming up. We still have Brian Cage, current Impact Wrestling Champion Brian Cage, Peter Avalon, Johnny Rogue is here. Again, it's a who's who of professional wrestling in this tournament. And here comes Bateman charging, flipped over in the corner. Oh, Ooh. elbow. Stuns Grimm. Oh, oh, Bateman going up, got caught with the boots. Just rattling the old cranium. It Goddamn looks like, man. It looks like Grimm's going for possibly a, a superplex off the top. Yes, he does. Oh, oh, my God. Beautiful, beautiful maneuver by Grimm. I believe he likes to call that low risk. The bottom row brain buster cover two. And a kick what? out. Low risk, but almost high almost reward. High almost reward. high reward for Grimm. But you got to wonder if, if executing such... Such a high risk maneuver, well, low risk, low risk high maneuver. reward maneuver such as that, and having Bateman kick out. Did that just gear up some frustration within Simon Grimm? Well, if it is, Grimm has to keep his cool. Of course, again, mind games here. Bateman is the type of person that would take advantage of it. Oh, oh, series of oh. strikes, series of lefts and rights, knocks down Bateman. Grimm looking like he's set up for the kill, running to the ropes. Bateman's up, oh. oh, right into the heart of Grimm. Bateman needs to make the cover. He might be taking way too long catering to the crowd. He's set it up for death from above. Here he goes. Oh, oh misses it. Here's the roll up for the cover. Two, nope, coming out. He's going for, he's going for a gosh pile drive. Oh, no, oh. no, flip over, cover. One, two, oh. Nice, beautiful transition to that. Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my right God. The and there's the tap. There's the tap. And Simon Grin moves on to and the finals. And here's your winner, Simon Grin. Beautiful, beautiful transition right there for the win. I mean, Joshua, this is the first match of the night. Again, what a great match. Every match here in this tournament could be a main event. And Grimm has just punched his way into the finals for the Rogue Tournament Championship. Literally and figuratively punching his ticket to the next round. That's right, and you can see Bateman carrying that arm. Doesn't look very happy, but obviously just lost his opportunity to be in the Rogue Tournament Finals. And there you go, Simon Grimm moving on into the finals. In a recap of our first round matches, in our very first match, Simon Grimm getting the win over his former tag team partner, Bateman. Bateman going for his signature death from above. Simon Grimm well scaled the move, rolled out of the way, and transitioned it into a beautiful armbar. Bateman had no choice but to tap. The goddamn man and the genius of armbar really went for it in that matchup. But at the end, I mean, Simon Grimm came out victorious. Really intrigued to see what he's going to be doing in the next round of this tournament.